What's up guys, Nightingale here, and welcome to another Adventure Black Book Guide. Today, we're covering Wyvern One-Shot. That's right, probably the second most commonly one-shot hunt in Epic Seven is Wyvern. Why? Because everybody wants speed gear, everybody wants to go fast, except for me. Hey. But, before you guys watch the video, I do ask that you pause it and go watch this video right here, which is intros to the one-shot comps. Please watch this video first, as it's going to cover a lot of information that I'm not going to cover specifically in this. This covers the basics of need to know, where this is covering specifically the hunt. So, pause the video, watch that, and come back. Alright, cool. Welcome back. Now, let's jump in and talk about the hunt. So, with my one-shot comp, I was determined to do this without SSB. It really irks me to see people just waste away their seaside bologna and throw them away to be a wyvern slave. Two, it really bugs me the fact that people are like, oh, well, I'm just going to replace it when I go to do one-shot comp. So what you're going to see here is the utility of reusing, recycling your original Wyvern team. Three of the four units here are actually your original Wyvern team, or close to it. Some of you used Furious, some of you used Lulica. I was the Lulica user, so, you know, I had to build Koran. Um, and then most of us were using Angelica or, not Syngelica, but Angelica or or Mo Montmorency or General Purgus. In my case, it was Montmorency and General Purgus. So my team has had several different iterations. I've used Furious, I've used Alexa, I've had Karan now, so I've seen just about everything. So the thing here that I really wanna drive home is recycling and reusing the long-term investments of Clarissa, because people are like, you don't really need to do this, you don't do that. So this brings more value to it so that you do it earlier on so that when the time comes, you can jump in, so really, if you can secure a good rage set and some good um, destruction gear, all you need is Angelica, and this hunt can get going. But you'll see what I mean here in a minute. It will require some things that maybe some of the newer players, if you've been playing since Guilty Gear, are not going to have access to. If you have Tanfa, we'll talk about it here in a little while. So let's jump in. We're going to work our way from the slowest unit to the fastest unit. So first off, we're going to talk about Sigrid, who comes in at absolutely three speed from dirt slow. Um... So, my cigarette here is my Wyvern cigarette. Nothing fancy here. This is the same cigarette I've been using since day one. She's got no imprints, no nothing. It's just plus 15 Wyvern cigarette. Actually, it's the same artifact and the same exclusive equipment I've used really since day one. Uh, I've been uh, preaching use the Sever uh, exclusive equipment for a very long time because in my theory, the way I was running, the way I was talking is this did more damage than it would if I had the number three one, which is the activation at 75% versus 50% because by the way, the by the way my Wyvern team originally worked, I was already below that threshold anyway when she had her S2 uh, up, so it really didn't matter. So I always preferred the Sever for just the extra damage coming off because she always came into that hunt with her S1. So I was always an advocate for that, and I just need to get the 14% for, I guess, flexing at this point. Uh, but you don't need it. This this one will do Katie's 13 and um, Wyvern 13. So, as you can see, I am missing one Reforge piece, which is fine. Uh, this is my second best Rage set, according to Fribbles. So, I'm going to move over just a little bit, and let's talk about a couple different things. So, Cigarette for Wyvern really should be built at absolute pure raw power. You don't need debuffs, you don't need anything like that. Build her for sheer raw power, and... Personally, the way I build my hunts are I'm using it to where if I don't need extra debuffs, I'm building it off the singular debuff, typically the defense break, to one-shot the hunt. So, yes, you could bake in some effectiveness. You could get yours with more effectiveness than mine to make sure that you're landing when Syngelica pulls her. You can, but I'm not worried about that at all. Mine's baked around absolutely no other RNG other than you give me a defense break, everything cycles the way it's supposed to, Wyvern's going to die. So here's the stats that I ended up coming up with. We came up with uh, 4,742. I think she's over 4,800 with um, the Reforge on the sword. She's at 112 speed, dirt slow, so I could get everything else. She's got 100% crit chance with the elemental advantage. Do keep that in mind. She is at 90, I think she's like 95, 96 when she's reforged. Uh, and then 308 crit damage. Now, again, I'll just say, no imprints, no nothing. This does everything we need it to do. Next up, we're going to go talk about Karan. 
Karan is a unit a lot of you may have actually had as your initial damage dealing unit. Uh, for some of you, this is a been a long time unit of yours, or today this might be the first time you're looking at building her. And if that's the case, my advice to you is friendship 10 her first, if this is a new unit for you. Reason being is we're going to talk about it in her skills in a few minutes. But my Karan is built in a way of my mentality was I built it off the six star damage. So I was already figuring she was going to be six star. I already knew she was going to be using super duper water gun shooter. Well, when I had to redo her gear. But prior to that, I was using Warhorn, which was throwing her off. The combat readiness push off Warhorn was really messing her up. So I changed that. And then the really helpful thing was that she got her exclusive equipment, which allows two bleeds, which is great bonus over damage. Um, but it's not necessary. Uh, but the effectiveness is there for the, um, the effectiveness is there just to help us get us over that 65 benchmark so that she lands her defense break pretty much all the time. Now, what you may be seeing here is you're noticing her crit chance is a little low. Yes, correct. And I'm counting on the reforges eventually to fix that. But for right now, she is with elemental advantage. She's in the high nineties. So I'm okay with it. I'll take the gamble. Yes, I will fail some runs because of this, but for right now, I would rather throw Banshee Reforge mats somewhere else. So, we've got her at sitting at 3,557 attack. We've got her at 136 speed, which is important. And then we have um, her with uh, 81 crit chance and 280 crit damage with 78 effectiveness. Now, why I said the 136 is important is because I had to do some calculations with Warhorn to make sure that she was fast enough that Singelica didn't lap her. And I needed to make sure that she wasn't um, too fast so that Clarissa could take her turn. So there wouldn't be speed RNG. So I got him up to as close as I could to prevent weird speed RNG, which took me about two days to figure out the speed RNG. Now, this is the thing I need to say right now. If you try to do this ex same exact hunt with the same exact stats, it'll work. But if you start tweaking some stats, you're going to have to play with the speed RNG a little bit. So get ready to have to mess around with some speed gems, taking off some stats to tweak these units. They will have to fall in some interesting areas. So in this case, with my Koran, what I wanted to do is I wanted to get away with the absolute minimum MOLA investment. Now, sure, I may have set aside 70 MOLAs for all my one-shot comps, but I did not want to spend them if I absolutely didn't have to. So what I want to talk about here is specifically her skills. If you were originally using this unit as a Wyvern unit, chances are she's probably plus 15. But if today's your first time looking at building her for your one-shot comp, she's blank, she has no MOLA investment, here's a couple things you need to know. Friendship 10 or first, so that she has the three free skill points. Pretty easy to do. Now, when it comes to her second skill, you don't need to mola this skill. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but hear me out. Because this skill goes off and it does not go against a defense break, it does absolutely crap for damage. Your cigarette can make this up easily. And same with Clarissa. Anything that goes after this will make up the damage. So it's better for you to not imprint or to not mola this than it is for you to mola the S3. Now, what I've been doing is I've been tweaking with the stats and slowly imprinting this and taking it up to the point where I feel like I'm doing enough damage so that I've got enough over damage. But I may still have to take this up one more time. Maybe. Depending on the results, after I run a couple, another, you know, hundred or so hunts, I'll see if I really need to do this or not. Or the reforge on cigarette may take care of it. But what I recommend you do is slowly work it up. This way, you're not overdoing it, and it may save you. In this case, it saves me seven molas if I don't have to take this up any further. But the damage here, because it's after the defense break, is a lot more noticeable. So the few bit of molas that you'd spend to maybe tweak your damage up front, wasteful. Put it back here on the back end of the defense break. So that's Karan. Um, again, with tuning her, if I'd have known some of this in, the, in hindsight, it would have made this a lot easier to get. But... You know, it's part of the learning process of getting this uh, unit built. Next up, we're going to talk about probably my most proud moment. Yeah, I'm going to say it. this is probably one of my most proud moments right here. This is my wave one one-shotting Clarissa. Something I didn't think was going to be able to be done. Now, pause the video, theoretically. All right. So, as you can see up here, we are running Portrait of Savior, which is a limited artifact. 
So this only runs during the Guilty Gear collab. So if you do not have this, you're in for a world of trouble. Not really, there is another option for you. There is a lovely little artifact. Some of you may know it, some of you may have used this. Some of you may even have one of these things leveled up. But there is an artifact down here that does exist. Let's see, where are you at? Maybe I got rid of it because I have four portraits. I think I got rid of it because, nope, here it is. Exorcist Tanfa. So if you would like, and you are playing since Guilty Gear has been rerun and you do not have it, your game got a little bit harder, but it can be done with this artifact. So, here's what you need to know. The minimum requirement with my gear, with my setup, to use Tanfa, so we're talking a super duper water gun shooter, we're talking a plus 21 Warhorn, we're talking a triple S Sangelica at 10.2% attack imprint. This gear, minus the artifact, you need to have a minimum of 4,760 attack with 350 crit damage to use Exorcist Tanfa. It is possible, it's doable. Portrait makes it so much easier because all you need to have at this point is 4,554 attack with 350 crit damage. Now, do you need 350 crit damage? Absolutely not. So the higher your attack, the lower your crit damage. The higher your crit damage, the lower your attack. So in this case, I've given you with my setup the minimum requirement that your Clarissa needs to have. She needs to be a minimum of 4,554 attack with 350 crit damage. But, wait, there's more. She has to be, for me, with this, 147 speed. I went 11 speed because I was like, I am bound and determined to make sure that she does not speed RNG Koran. Because if she speed RNG's Koran, I'm screwed. Because Koran cannot go first. So, I will tell you the backstory behind this is I had her just initially i had koran at like i had sigurd at like 113 115 so koran was like 125 126 sangelica was like 130 and change i'm going oh crap when i couldn't get this working right and sangelica kept lapping them i'm going okay how am i gonna fix this you want to talk about Luxac? here it is right here this is Luxac 101 if you want to know what a Luxac looks like it's this guy right here hitting that boot that is Luxac. i happen to have this random boot it went all into speed thank you and here we go, I fixed my issue, and it put it exactly where I need it. King of Luxac is this boot right here. So, here's the thing. Do you need a 21 speed boot? Absolutely not. But if I'd have known I needed 147 speed in the hindsight of things, Fribbles would have been a lot easier to figure this out. Because then I could just said, I need 147 speed, this, this, and this. Find it for me. Thank you, please. So, now you know that you need to bake in a little bit of speed everywhere. None of this crap has speed on it unless I've put it on there. But baking in a little extra speed in some of these pieces reduces that speed requirement on that boot dramatically. So if I'd have been able to have a little bit of speed in all of those rolls, this could have been a lot better. But I got lucky, luck sack the boot, here we go, we're ready to rock and roll. You will do. You will need the 14% attack imprint here, absolutely has to have this, as well as um, the S3 for doing the extra damage with her S3. Uh, I do have her triple S, which is, is helping out Karan and, um, Karan and, um, Sigrid, so do keep that in mind. My damage is also being calculated off of this, so, I mean, this is a pretty decked out team. She does not get her own imprint. Just in case you are newer and haven't quite figured that out yet, she's not getting her own imprint. Now, last but not least, the other one that kind of was a pain in the butt to figure out, because I just kind of wasn't paying attention was Sangelica. Now, Sinful Angelica, the only major requirement you absolutely have to have is a minimum of 200 ER. That's it. So, everything else is pretty much now tuning to whatever. So, in this case, we have 224 ER unreforged on a lot of this stuff, and yeah, she's not getting that, she's not getting stripped, and she's not getting pushed back. It's not happening. But, I initially started with my PvP uh, Sangelica, which was like 240 something. Way too fast way too fast for this so then i brought it down to around a 200 and i got my er and you know everything i needed that was still too fast because i wasn't accounting for the warhorn proc and i mean i'm even running a hp based boot like this speed is not off speed boots um so this is just me fribbling gear trying to tr find 200 plus er and working around speeds 
So this is where that speed tuning f finessing really came in to playing around. And this took me about three days to get it right. Cigarette wasn't an issue. She was dirt slow. I knew I wasn't going to ever have an issue with her. But now between Coran, Clarissa, and Sangelica was my issues. Once I figured out the speed RNG to work with Warhorn, because you've got to account for the Warhorn push. I had an issue with her initially. Warhorn was on Coran, pushing her forward. Not what you wanted. So I switched them so it no longer pushed her. And now as long as Warhorn pops inside wave one, I have no speed RNG issues. So, the cool thing is, is we got decent bulk on her, we got decent HP, she's going to take a hit. So, she's not dying wave one, period. She's not having to worry about that. I don't need her any faster than this, and I'll show you why here in just a second as we jump into it. Uh, I do have her molded, and that's just because she was my wyvern, um, she was, or she was my, um, PvP Sangelica. So, she literally just has her, uh, S3 max for cooldown, just in case I decided I could keep her alive long enough to use it again. Typically, it was never the case, but hey, there was a few times she stayed alive long enough to use it again. So, that's the only reason why she's mullet. If not, you can go away with just six-starring her, max imprinting her. And keep in mind, the max imprint, you cannot use the effect resist because you need that 10.2 attack percent on Clarissa. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. So, let's jump in and actually show you the Wyvern run in its entirety. Now... The sad thing is, is there is only one, one way you fail this. Well, I'll say there are two ways to fail this. Way number one is you get the defense break on the Wyvern. Way number two is Clarissa gets one shot, which is very, very, very rare, but there is a chance that they double attack and they pop Clarissa. And if that's the case, game over. That's fine. So here we go. Turn one. So I'll let you see the speed RNG right here. So as you can see, we got everything in the proper order. Clarissa's going to go first. He's going to pop off, which is going to fire off uh, Warhorn 3. So the CR bush push happens to her. Fine. Great. Perfect. Then Clarissa and um, Karan are just enough that they aren't going to speed RNG in each other. And then Sigurd's sitting in the back saying, hi, I'm waiting to do my thing. So here we go. Turn number one gives us the attack buff and the immortality at this point. So now, at this point, we are ready to go. Clarissa now has enough attack and everything to be able to one-shot this guy, which if I can get it to do it on post, I will have him zoomed out. But if not, it's number three needs to, get, needs to die first. So with the way we've got it set up, she has now, with the attack buff and everything else we've laid out prior to this video, she now has enough to kill him. So here we go, S3. And now he dies. Now, once he dies, it's going to pop her passive, Rage Mode, which will now uh, kill the front two Nagas. Done. Wave one complete. Typically, this is where SSB has to use Rengard Drink and Lap and all sorts of stuff. We just did it with Clarissa. Hooray. Now, this is where uh, things can fail again. <clears throat> so this would be the first failure is if Karan fails to land the defense break. So if she lands the defense break, we'll be right back and I will get another run going. But if not, here we go. So all she has to do is crit. And... No! Let's try this again and hope we don't get 15% in. So, here we go. Now, this is failure number one, as you just saw, if the run's gonna fail. So, here we go. Karan, do your job. There we go. And now the hunt is guaranteed. There's no way we fail this at this point. Unless we really miss a crit somewhere along the way, which shouldn't happen. But this is where we go on from here. So the great news is, is from here on out, Karan's going to do her S3. And if we get the bleeds, great. If we don't, great. It's still going to die. So there we go. We got our two bleeds. Now Singelica will pull the highest attacker at this point. That is Sigrid and will always be Sigrid. Yes, Clarissa is close, but Sigrid is higher. So off goes the S1. You've got a chance to land the... Um, you do have a chance to land the attack down there off of Clarissa, which will help out. It gives three debuffs, so that's 30% uh, defense pen. But it's fine. We've made up the damage. It's more than enough. So we're going to smack it. And now Sigrid will finish it off with her S3. So do keep in mind that it will uh, penetrate the defense by 30%, an additional 10% for each extra debuff. So there is... 10, 20, 30. So, an extra, so that's 60% defense pen right there. Plus, so we're actually, it's completely 50% defense pen already. 
for the defense break. <clears throat> and there we go, 120, and it's extinct. So I think my maximum is like 128,000, I think is what she's supposed to be doing. So again, there can be a little weird speed RNG. Again, if there is Warhorn, it doesn't proc at the right time and uh, the defense break. Those are really your two lose conditions here. Or in this case for me, if one of them doesn't crit because while I'm still using slightly scuff gear <clears throat> on them and I'm still working on getting the reforge mats. Uh, but for right now that cover, I mean, they are, they're good to go. So the, to close this up, the big thing that I really want you to note is um, knowing ahead of time how the hunt works definitely helps out a lot more. And having somebody hopefully explain this makes this a lot easier to one shot. So keep in mind, it really comes down to your gear. You're going to need to build your cigarette first and see kind of where she's at. Then you need to determine whether you, or if you're going to do the ram, the rim one shot, you need to know if you're going to be doing that. If it's so that, or I should be saying two shot, uh, if you're going to be using SSB, you kind of got to plan out what you're going to want to do. Then work on figuring out the rough basis of gear. Do the math. It's a lot of math. It's really painful to do. Um, but figure that out. <clears throat> and then it helps you able to use like a program like Fribbles really allows you to figure out the min maxing of your gear and where and what you want to go with it. Um, but hopefully with the knowledge that I've given you from my experience of getting the Wyvern one shot set up, it will help you set yours up easier. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one.